This video is a continuation of the previous one, where we created RESTful sensors to get sunlight intensity using the forecast.solar API. Now, we're going to build a scenario for automatically closing and opening your blinds based on that. Data. Of course, if you have a physical solar irradiance sensor, you can use the instead of the RESTful one, the logic remains the same. When setting up automations in Home Assistant, you can choose from several organizational strategies to suit your needs. You might opt to organize by devices, consolidating all triggers and actions into a single automation for a device or group of devices. Alternatively, organizing by zones allows you to manage all scenarios for a specific room or area in one place. Another option is to structure automations by events such as grouping all scenarios tied to a sunrise event together. Each method offers its own set of benefits and challenges, depending on your smart home setup and preferences. By understanding these approaches, you can create a more efficient and tailored automation system that enhances your home assistant experience. I prefer to organize by device, so you will see the one single automation for a blind opening a closing. All right, let's set up the trigger that will close the blinds when sunlight gets too strong. First, head over to your home assistant settings, then click on automations and scenes. Now hit the create automation button and choose create new automation. Next, click on plus add trigger. In the search bar that appears, just start typing numeric and then go ahead and select the numeric state trigger from the list. Now let's set up the trigger by filling in the key fields. Entity. This should point to your solar irradiance sensor. Start to type your sensor name to find it from the list. Above, enter the irradiance level that should trigger the blinds to close. I hope you followed the advice from my previous video and have already determined a good threshold. By watching how your sensor behaves throughout the day. One more quick tip. Make sure to name your trigger. You can do this by clicking the three-dot menu on the trigger card. Giving it a clear name makes things way easier when linking conditions or actions later on. That's it. The first trigger is done. Be sure to check the first comment under this video. I've added a link to my article there, where you'll find the corresponding YAML code for this automation to create a trigger for opening your blinds. You can simply duplicate the one we just made for closing. Then, just change the condition from above to below and set the irradiance level at which your blinds should open. And don't forget, give this new trigger a clear name too. Just like before, click the triggered field on the trigger card and update the name. So, it's easy to identify later when setting up actions. Surprisingly, those two triggers alone, based on irradiance, aren't quite enough to keep your room comfortable. You might have already noticed this. Your sensor can show high sunlight intensity, even when no direct sunlight is hitting your window. Here's a real example. My window faces east. Once the sun's azimuth goes beyond 130 degrees, direct sunlight is gone. But the irradiance reading might still be high just because of indirect light. And here's the key takeaway. Indirect sunlight doesn't really heat up your room the same way direct sunlight does. Just a heads up, the sun.azimuth attribute is disabled by default in Home Assistant. So before we continue building the automation, you'll need to enable it. Here's how. Go to Settings, then Devices and Services. Find your sun integration and click on it. Next, click where it says one service under that integration. Now you'll see both the enabled and disabled sun entities. To turn on the azimuth attribute, click on Disabled Entities. Look for Solar Azimuth and click it. You'll see a message saying the entity is disabled. Click the gear icon to open its settings. Switch on Enabled, then click Update. And that's it. The azimuth attribute is now active and ready to use in your automation. All right, let's go ahead and add the third trigger. Head back to Automations and Scenes. Open the automation you saved earlier and click Add Trigger. 
Type numeric in the search bar and choose numeric state trigger. For the entity, select Sun. Then, in the attribute dropdown, choose azimuth. Now, in the above field, enter the Sun azimuth value, the one that indicates when direct sunlight is no longer hitting your room. Now that we've got all three triggers in place, let's set up the action to close your blinds based on the right condition. Start by scrolling down to the Then Do section of your automation. Click plus Add Action, and from the list, choose Choose. This lets you build different scenarios depending on which trigger actually fired. The first option under Choose is already there by default, so go ahead and open it up. Next, click plus Add Condition and select Triggered By. You will see a list of your triggers. Just pick the one that should cause your blinds to close. Now, under that same option, click plus add action and choose cover, set position. Then hit choose device and pick your blind controller from the list. Set the position to something like 40% if you're reusing exterior roller shutters. That is usually a nice balance between blocking heat and keeping the room bright. Once you're done, your automation should look similar to what's shown in the reference image. Important note, as you can see, I've set the opening position to 40%. That's because I'm using exterior roller shutters, and for me, 40% strikes a good balance. It helps reduce heat buildup in the room, while still letting in enough natural light to keep the space comfortably lit. And finally, let's set up the action to open your blinds. Start by clicking Plus Add option under the Choose action. This creates a second path in your automation. We'll use this one to handle the opening logic. Under option two, click plus add condition and choose OR as the condition type. We're using OR here because we want the blinds to open if either of two things happens. The solar irradiance drops below your threshold or the sun's azimuth shifts far enough that your window is no longer in direct sunlight. Now, under the if any condition matches section, click plus add condition, then select triggered by and choose the irradiance trigger you set up earlier with the below condition. Click plus add condition again and choose triggered by one more time. Now select your azimuth trigger, the one for when the sun moves out of your window's direct line. With the condition set, let's define the action. Click plus add action under this same option and select Cover, Set Position. Set the position to 100%, which will fully open your blinds. From my experience, using Set Position gives you better flexibility compared to just choosing Cover, Open, especially if you want more precise control later on. Finally, hit Choose Device and select your blind controller from the list. Once you're done, the second action path is ready, and your full automation should be saved now. You can find the link to the Zigbee blind controller I use for my roller shutters in the second comment on this video.